Well, hi everybody, um, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Coffee and Craft Podcast. Um, I'm Bernadette, um, otherwise known as Eco Geek on most platforms. Um, I'm coming to you from my craft room in Vancouver, BC, and I'm honestly feeling really awkward about filming my first podcast on my own, so hopefully this goes okay. Um, uh, this will again hopefully be a bi-weekly podcast about knitting, spinning, sewing, and all things crafty. Um, and also maybe where I drink coffee and talk to you guys about said things. But yeah, welcome everyone and thank you for uh, for checking me out and going down this rabbit hole with me. Um, before we jump into um, finished objects and whips and all that fun stuff. I just wanted to let you know what I'm wearing. This is my Rain Outside Shawl by Sylvia McFadden um, that I knit in Barocco Ultra Alpaca, um, which is giant and huge and squishy and very, very warm. So the odds of me continuing to wear it may, may be small, um, but it is very, it's my big, large, comfy go-to shawl. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to hop right into it because um, I'm not quite sure <laughs> what else to do. I have been on a major, major sock kick. Um, Amy of Stranded Dye Works and the Stranded Podcast and Sarah of Love Sock Wool both have their festive sock knit alongs going and I am a huge, huge fan of Christmas sock yarn and Christmas socks. So I've just gone like full, full fledged into, into my Christmas sock binge. The um, actually, well, I'm thinking about it before I get into the new ones. My, to emphasize my Christmas sock binge, I have this oh, giant box, which you can't see, um, that I've been keeping all of my Christmas socks and sock yarn in. If anyone watches Amy's podcast, you realize that we both accidentally bought the same box for our Christmas sock yarn. <laughs> so you've probably seen this box before. But what I've done is I have inside, let's see if I can do this without, well, it sort of works. You can see I have all of my Christmas sock yarn in here and my finished Christmas socks that I finished so far, which is why mine won't close. <laughs> I, it's kind of, I've just been keeping it on my coffee table and it's my like optimistic box of Christmas socks, which I, makes me really happy to just open up and look at because um, I have all these wonderful potential sock yarns. So like my Christmas sock box before the this year was these three. My O Denim Bomb socks that if you are a viewer of the Wet Coast Wolves podcast you have seen. Um, I have some good old opal opal Christmas socks and then I have the old apparently discontinued Cascade sock yarn. Um, that I knit, I think, last year for Christmas. Um, they have a new one of these, though, that is 100% on my to-buy list. <laughs> um, so my Christmas socks so far this year um, are these ones. Again, if you watch the Wet Coast Wolves podcast, you've seen these before. These are the Monkey Socks um, by Cookie A, done in... What is it? Bad Santa? buy yarn over New York and they make me so so happy. So this was first pair of Christmas socks this year but fourth pair total. Do 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 putting these back in fourth pair total. Um, these because they're on the sock blocker are my most recently finished pair of Christmas socks to add to the box. Um, so these would be five total. Uh, this is West Yorkshire Spinners in Hollyberry um, with a little OMG heel in it, which is one of my favorite heels. It's one of the fastest heels to do, and it mimics the little, or at least fastest heels for me to do, and it mimics little heel flap and gusset, which I really like, but can still be done as a short row and easy to do in contrast yarn. Um, the heel is Osterman's Step, and I got ages and ages and ages ago. Um, so I'm not sure what the colorway is, but it's Osterman stuff, and then the shelf striping is West Yorkshire Spinners in their Hollyberry colorway. So this is their Christmas yarn from two years ago. Two years ago? Last year? Something like that. 
And then I got these. This is their new one that I just received. That is candy cane. So this arrived the day that I finished these guys, which is perfect because I don't need any more um, sock yarn, really, or, or Christmas sock yarn. But since these were knit up, I feel less bad about it. <laughs> Um, and the thing I love most about these is the, they're, well, they're a 75-25 blend for sock yarn, but part of that 75% is at least 35% BFL, which is great because it really leads to a really sturdy sock yarn. And I'm really excited to see how these wear. So this is pair number five. Five. I'm just going to fold these up. Now that I've showed you guys, I can put them in my box of socks. And with December right around the corner, I think I should start wearing these. It's felt too early to wear Christmas socks, but summer's like, what, the end of the week? Yeah, yeah, summer's the end of the week, so I should, I just crack into these guys, really. Um, I also have this pair of Christmas socks, so I'm just getting them on the blockers because they're the prettier that way. <laughs> um, so these are caught on my sleeve. Ah! These are Ferner Mally 6 ply sock, I believe. So these I knit out of leftovers from a pair of socks that I knit for my boyfriend last year. So we have matching socks, which I like doing because we both have fairly thin feet. So normally I can get a pair of socks for us both if one of us has contrast heels and toes, um, if I want to. Um, so this is Ferner Mally. And then the black is Briggs and Little Durasport. Um, these guys, because I only had 30 grams left over, um, I just did, I just cast on my toe, and then knit a tube with an afterthought heel in it until I ran out of yarn and got like a pretty decently sized pair of socks out of it. Um, these were sport, so they went a little bit faster. Um, and I was able to knit them on a 2.75 millimeter needle, so they went much faster actually. Um, and the afterthought heel um, was great because I didn't have to sit down and do braining about it, which is awesome. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about the black Briggs and Little because it is a single ply. It is a wool nylon blend, but it is still a single ply. Um, so we'll verdicts still out on whether or not these will wear well. I'm hoping because they're Christmas socks, it won't be as big of a deal. Um, but yeah. There's those guys. Um, for my sport weight socks on the larger needles, I think I did 48 stitches. And then these guys and most of my other socks are a 60 stitch on a 2.25 millimeter, which I've also hopefully put right in the area down below, hopefully. <laughs> um, so that's that. I might just put those on top of my Christmas box of socks. And then... Actually, I lied. This is going to fall, so I'm just going to put this on the floor. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for my final, my final finished object, I have my Arnie and Carlos Perfect socks. Um, which the yarn is lovely. I love the Arnie and Carlos self-striping yarns, but I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with these socks at the moment. Um, so these are them. It's uh, they're the Garden Garden color colorway, I believe. That is also a series of numbers that I don't fully know. But uh, so as you can tell, they match pretty perfectly. Obviously, because that's kind of the point, right? If they didn't match, they wouldn't be perfect. Um, so the thing I hate hated a bit about these, I'm normally a toe-up sock knitter, so normally I go this direction, do some sort of short rear heel or an afterthought heel or something like that, and then knit all the way up. The things I didn't like about this yarn was one, the ribbing is supposed to be freakishly long. <laughs> like, it's huge. It's this much ribbing. And as you can tell from my other socks, I don't like to do a bunch of ribbing. This is honestly the most ribbing I've done on socks in forever. I've been trying to force myself to do more ribbing. Does anyone enjoy doing ribbing? I don't know if any knitter really, really does. Um, 
but the ribbing was supposed to be like a solid two two inches and that was just far too much so I knit knit the ribbing because you have to go top down on these um, have to do there was too much ribbing the leg was also a very very long leg which was good in a way because I also cheap out on doing my legs my legs on my socks I've noticed <laughs> as a sock knitter have gotten progressively shorter and shorter and shorter <laughs> So it forced me to do a longer leg um, and I got to do a heel flap but the hate part I don't the hate part I guess hates a strong word but it was too much ribbing and because of the fact they had to be knit in a certain way to match there was very little flexibility in my socks and not like I rewrite the book when I knit a pair of socks but when I I think it annoyed me that I had to do it a specific way which is silly but <laughs> I, I, maybe I just didn't like the fact that I would didn't have any room for creativity because with socks normally I will like I'll cast on the toe knit up the foot and then be like oh what heel do I want to do and I don't have to make up my mind for a while um, before I get to it but these are done um, I don't know if I have much to add more about the perfect stuff if you find them kicking around I say give it a go especially if you're already a top-down sock knitter um, they're really really nice socks and also this like this is one whole color repeat so if you do want your socks to match and you're doing Arnie and Carlos socks um, getting non perfect skeins would make it very hard to get them to match because like this is one color repeat and then I think this is another one and I can't you would waste so much yarn trying to get them to match otherwise so don't normally care if they match um, but it's sometimes nice to have that option so yeah those are all done. Um, it does look like I got a ton of knitting done, but I've been stuck in a lot of meetings and things for the past couple of weeks, so it's just been a lot of, like, as I put it, fidget spinner knitting. So you're just trying to keep your attention on the person who's talking. But yeah, that's, that's that. So I'm now up to, I was counting and then I completely forgot. They keep counting. So four... So this is five, and then these were six, that's six, doing a really great job of showing these off to six, and then seven. So I'm up to like a week's worth of Christmas socks, and I have enough sock yarn to do, sorry the box is on the floor, I'm looking at the box and counting. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13. I feel like I'm, oh, and I ordered one more for 14. I'm waiting for it to arrive. <laughs> 14, 15, 16. Okay, yeah, because I have two other pairs of sock yarn. Sock, Christmas, oh my god. Two more pairs of Christmas socks on the needles. If you guys want, I'm sure you're probably sick of Christmas socks. It's like me and, I feel like everyone's knitting all the Christmas socks. Um, so I apologize if you're also Christmas socked out. Um, I'm also, you're probably not here if you're Christmas socked out, because anyone who knows me and follows me on the internet knows that I am obsessed at the moment, so kind of all about the Christmas themed knits. Okay, so while I'm thinking of Christmas socks, I'm just going to jump right into my whips. Um, and apologies if I keep looking there, because I have my a mirror set up behind my camera so I can see what I'm doing because I don't have a flipper on the screen. It's a super professional setup at the moment. But yeah, so after I finished the Holly Berry socks and the Ferner socks, I obviously needed to cast on more Christmas socks. So I have or I have this skein of custom woolen mills um, and their sock yarn. Um, which is, I don't know if you guys can see the heathering and how pretty this is. Um, it is still a 75, I think it's 75, 25, maybe 70, 30. Um, sock yarn from Custom Woolen Mills that they started doing as of October. Um, which is really cool, because the thing I love about Custom Woolen Mills, I'm sure I've talked about this before, and you guys probably already know, but Custom Woolen Mills is one of the two major mills in Canada um, that is that is able to process Canadian wool. Um, so this yarn is 100% Canadian. Sheep, like Western sheep, spun in Alberta, and it's a woolen spun yarn. I don't know actually if the, the sock yarn is woolen spun. 
it'll be interesting to see um, if when it's woolen spun if it'll kind of poof up. Woolen's just a different way of processing wool. So worsted is like a normal commercial yarn, like a Cascade 220 that doesn't, it's not heavy, but woolen spun has a bit more air trapped in it. So it's a little bit lighter, a little bit loftier. Um, and when you wash it, it kind of poofs. Um, so I don't know actually if these are woolen spun. I hope they're woolen spun. Um, these would be, I don't know, solid question mark on that one. But I am knitting, I have too many stitch markers on here. So I am knitting the Evergreen, yeah, Evergreen Socks by Madeline Gannon, um, which hopefully you guys can see. Yeah, see those guys there. Um, so I only have one of them going. Normally I knit my socks in stereo, but I only have one going at the moment. Um, the pattern is obviously knit from the top down with a lace tree in it. Um, what I was planning on doing, which is why I still have a little stitch marker there, is I think I'm going to take this tree pattern and continue it down the foot um, for a couple of repeats. I Mainly because I don't think I can knit plain green in like just in a non, just plain green sock for like nine, nine inches, eight inches, something like that. After gusset decreases, I think I would die of boredom. Um, you could in theory flip the chart and do it from the toe up, but again, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So I've started doing my heel flap. Um, and we'll see if I continue these trees down the foot. I may need, may just need to, uh, um, need some plain vanilla knitting after I turn the heel. So who knows? Cause after I turn the heel, I'm going to pick up the stitches for the gusset. Um, and then probably cast on the second one. I just wanted to get through the chart of this one in case I needed some plain vanilla knitting or in case this went horribly, horribly wrong. Um, oh my gosh, I'm getting so warm. <sighs> no more shawl. Okay. So the other alterations I made to this guy, um, because it is a lace pattern, um, it is, there's only limited amounts of charts you can do, or limited amounts of sizes you can do. Maybe she has a, I think a medium and a large, or a small and a large. Um, I know with my foot that generally, with my gauge, I need a 60 stitch sock. So in order to adapt her sizing to my sock recipe that I have in my head, I used the large chart and threw a couple more stitches on the side. So it became a 20 stitch repeat, and then I repeated it three times to fit in my 60 stitch sock recipe. So I have less trees going around. I only have three trees, um, but it still works. Still good. Um, and now I know it'll fit me. Although this gauge is so dense though. Can you guys see how tiny and tight these stitches are? I'm really hoping it's a woolen spun, which then it'll poof up and make a nice warm cozy sock. The other pair I have on my needles is in the Regia Seasonal Colorways. God, the sun's coming out. I don't realize we haven't seen the sun in Vancouver in weeks. Um, so I have these guys going. So this is the uh, Tenenbaum colorway in the region, the seasonal Regia line that they had. That and I have the toe of the other one cast on as well. Got a lot of, a lot of knitting done. So these guys, I'm going to do an OMG heel in as well, like I did for the Hollyberry socks, because I haven't done an OMG heel in a while besides the Hollyberry ones, and I realized how much I enjoyed them. They are, like, it's a fast little heel, and it's easy to do contrast in, and I wanted to use this little. Regia baby smile, my first Regia thing that I got at 88 stitches ages ago for the heels. Because so I think it's the right kind of, I think it's the right kind of red. Hopefully. I think. I do have a green, but I think the red matches better. So, some little red heel in it. So, I've been trying to focus on my whips. I did a mental count while watching Ghostbusters the other day and realized that I have 14 works in progress at the moment, which is insane and not okay. <laughs> I used to be the type of person who had a, would have a rotation of three. Um, anything above that made me a little stressed out and uncomfortable. And I realized I'm past a point of comfortability. 
14 does include all like my memory blankets and all the bunch of blankets I'm making, but still too many. So I'm kind of putting myself in a cast on stop, like hiatus. Um, an opposite of cast, uh, cast on itis. Do we have an opposite of that? If there is, let me know. <laughs> I can't think of what it is. Um, yeah, so I've been focusing on my whips and trying to get my whips nailed down. Um, so there will be no cast ons for the next little bit of time, but hopefully lots of finished objects. That is the goal. Um, so the last, uh, the last whip I had before, or the last cast on I had, besides my socks, uh, before I've now put myself on like a cast on hiatus. I'm gonna go with that for now. <laughs> Um, was I cast on a pair of um, mittens by Skane Deer that she relate, released um, recently. I cast them on because she came into Vancouver a couple of weeks ago um, for a conference and I was very lucky enough to get to meet her. She came by the yarn store um, and it was great to get to meet her. She's one of the kindest people um, and she was very tired uh, but very generous with her time and it was great to meet her and um, Ellie if you're watching thank you for making an effort um, to come to dinner and to come to the store and it was really great to meet you and I'm very happily knitting your mittens at the moment which are tangled which is what I'm <laughs> staring at um, also apologies for how I'm going to pronounce this um, so these are the jewel jewel or not jewel Yule book mittens um, by Skane Deer. So these are her latest, um, one of her latest patterns. She's been releasing patterns like a fiend. But me being in the Christmas place I am, I cast these guys on. So they're full color work. And I've got, that's what the other side looks up like. I've picked up for the thumb. Um, I'm just happily knitting away on these. These actually, for they're knit in a fingering weight. It's supposed to be like a heavy fingering slash sport. So I'm knitting these guys in Outlaw Yarns which is a wool alpaca possum blend in the green one's leather and then this one's fog. Um, now the reason I picked an alpaca possum blend is because fingering weight isn't normally warm enough for mittens for me, or at least I'd be worried. I'm worried that it won't be. The, um, the possum is ridiculously warm and so is the alpaca. So I'm hoping with the two powers combined, they will um, keep my hands nice and toasty. So that's what it looks like on. There's my little naked thumb. Um, yeah. So they, uh, the possum adds this really, I don't know if you guys can see this beautiful, this beautiful halo. Um, and it's really nice. I'm not a huge fan of working with mohair, but I imagine if you held mohair double with it, it would be the same, same sort of halo-y effect. The, um, the pattern is really well written and I didn't change anything about it besides the cuff. In the pattern she has a beautiful like lace cuff but I um, get very chilly wrists and was a little bit worried about the ability to fit so I did the same striping pattern, the same, everything the same except I just did it in a 2x2 two two rib and then increased up to the right number for the hand. Um, and it's, oh, it's such a great pattern and because it's color work it's so addictive and it's so nice and soft and it's going to be so warm. Um, and also, because of the, um, the blend of this yarn, it feels like I'm knitting with kittens. It's so soft. I'm excited. Well, I'm ex gonna say, I'm excited for whoever gets to hold hands with me because then they get to hold hands with a kitten. Um, <laughs> a kitten mitten, but I don't think my boyfriend's terribly excited about getting to hold hands with a kitten. I could be wrong. Who knows? Um, yeah. These will hopefully be done by the next time I talk to you guys because they go very, very fast. Like I knit from here up in one evening of just sitting, sitting at home and knitting. It was great. Okay, so that's all the Christmas works in progress, I believe. Um, so like I alluded to, I have way too many works in progress. And obviously my stress manifested in a way where I was obsessing about my stash and obsessing about how many works in progress progressies I have. <laughs> so in my obsession about my stash, 
and worrying about it, I cast on a new blanket. Because I just, I was looking at my stash and I realized how many scraps of acrylic I had and random balls of acrylic that I didn't know what to do with and honestly I don't really want in my stash. Um, acrylic's great, um, but when I buy it, or when I use it, it's mainly for gifts um, and for people I know that won't hand wash things and I'd rather just not have it sitting around. Um, so what I did is I gathered up all my scraps and put them in a giant bag scraps and also honestly full balls of acrylic that have just been sitting in my stash for no reason. Um, I just had this urge to get rid of all of them. And what I've been doing is I'm holding them double and knitting or I'm crocheting a granny stripe blanket because I also hadn't gotten a chance to cast on a granny stripe blanket yet. So what I've been doing is I'm holding one strand of a neutral, so either a gray, a white, or a black with some sort of color. Um, and then I'm just crocheting it until one of them runs out and then I'm magic knotting the next color on and then just gonna keep going in perpetuity until all of this yarn is gone. Um, and what's going to happen with this blanket is it's going to be a gift for my father who although I love him is not the best at hand washing things. So. <laughs> Um, he requested actually a scrappy blanket at some point and I, that's kind of why I decided to do this. Um, so I chained this on the other day and it is way, <laughs> way too long. Cause I, I chained and then laid across my bed and I was like, oh, that's probably a good length and then didn't recheck it. Then later, I think I changed 200, 219, something like that. It's on my Ravelry page, 219, uh, stitches on a nine millimeter hook because I'm working with worsted weight held double and I didn't want it to be bulletproof. What I realized is that um, this is way too wide. I have a decent amount of length but just to demonstrate that it is far far too long so I'm just gonna keep going with it. So it is long enough to be the height of a queen size bread bed. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Didn't mean to do it, I'm sorry. It was a mistake. So depending on how wide it gets um, with the amount of yarn I have, it may end up being this direction as opposed to this direction, but we will, my goal is to just get as much of this yarn out of my stash as possible. So it's a little bit crazy looking, a um, little bit wackadoodle, um, but that's fine. It's just a scrappy, crazy blanket. Um, and I really need, really want, um, I'm obsessed with making it. So my brain kind of thinks I can get it done for Christmas, but I'm not putting stress on myself because I didn't cast it on as a Christmas present. I cast it on as a way to bust a bunch of random bits of stash. So that's um, that's what it's for. And hopefully that's what it will do. Um, yeah. And I'm now officially on blanket making hiatus because with casting this on, um, I'm up to five blanket whips, um, which realizing that is what sent me down the spiral of having too many works in progress or realizing I had too many works in progress. Cause I was like, wait, how many blankets do I have on my needles and or hook? And it was five. And then I was like, wait, how many other things do I have on my hook? And I think I or hook and or needles. And it was like seven. And that math's not adding up. Um, <laughs> it was too many things. It's like two pairs of socks, a pair of mittens, three sweaters, two shawls. Like it was just too much, too much stuff. Um, those numbers are also not correct. I'm going to take some photos and do like a public whip shaming on my blog. So I'm going to go into more details on projects, like how long things have been on my needles, um, and then getting them done. Um, cause I'd kind of like to start 2018 with, um, less whips and get stuff done and get like a fresh plate because there's changes all over the place. And I'd like to kind of st start anew, if that makes sense. Um, but honestly, one of my longest wing lingering whips is this blanket that I've been crocheting since almost since me and my boyfriend started dating which is like three three and a half almost four years ago um he very 
I believe I talked about this on the Wet Coast podcast at some point, but he very nicely, um, at some point bought five or six balls of acrylic in the same brand in a bunch of different colors. And he's like, you could make a crazy blanket with them. And it was a very sweet beginning of dating present. Um, and it is taking me three years to get it to the point it's currently at. <laughs> Cause I crocheted, crocheted up all the granny squares and they've just been sitting in a bag for a long time. So I'm finally, I'm dedicating myself to seeming or joining these together and having this done. I, this I need to have done by the end of the year. So if I don't, I just, I, I can't have this on my hook for four years. So, doo -doo -doo. so I have, I already prearranged these last year on the floor and then put them into stacks. Um, so I, at this point, I don't even have to think about it. I'm just granny square joining them together. Um, and I am, oh, it is, I should have warned you all. It is big and kind of tacky. Um, <laughs> It's being done on a 10 millimeter hook. Um, oh, and it, it is backwards. Oh, I'm so professional. Um, so I'm up to joining, I'm joining the fourth row along. Um, so you can kind of tell that I'm doing like diagonals of colors, maybe. Yeah, I'm just trying to get this joined together. Um, so this was a super bulky acrylic that Michaels used to carry. Um, cause at the time me and my boyfriend met, I worked at Michaels and so did he. Um, and he knew I like yarn. So he bought them <laughs> for me. Um, so this is a super bulky acrylic. I can't remember the name of, I will probably have put it like right at the bottom. Um, and the black that I'm joining it together with is loops and thread impeccables held double because um, it was the cheapest way to seam this together because um, initially he just wanted me to sew them all together in a crazy pattern but I needed the the black border to add some stability to all this so I'm on the fourth the fourth row down here I'm joining them together um, I'm just crocheting over my ends um, yeah, I'm just crocheting over my ends and then trimming them off once I finish the row. It doesn't need to be super nice or well done. It's for us and the whole point is just to have something kind of wash and wear for us to have. Um, I'd say for like when we go camping, but we don't go camping. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to finish joining them together with the Impeccables Held Double and then I, hopefully... Um, well, my plan is to then go around the outside and just do <clears throat> a granny stripe border just to make this a little bit thicker and to even it out a bit because I don't think I joined these guys together at the top properly. So that's that. Um, I've really been enjoying crocheting blankets. I honestly, I think I prefer crocheting blankets more than knitting them. But yeah, I've just, I've been really enjoying working on that and I really that's one of my longest lingering whips so if I could get that off my hook by the end of the year I'd be very very happy um I've also been doing some work on a shawl for soft sweater I can't show you can't really talk about it but it's there and working on it and when I have details that I can tell you I will um so that's all of my whips and foes and all that regular fun stuff for you um, I'd like to apologize for how awkward I have been. I didn't realize how weird it would be to talk to a camera by myself because I've been talking to a camera <laughs> with someone else for a year and I didn't realize that transition would be as weird as it is. Um, you, I'm hoping, well if you stuck, stuck through to the end, thank you for dealing with how weird I am and this will hopefully get easier for me um, to do because I do, I miss podcasting and I want want to still be in the podcasting world. Um, but what I would like from you guys, if you'd be willing to um, lend me your time, is I want to do 
something different with this podcast and I'm not I'd like to know what you guys would like to see um besides well I assume you want to see normal knitting projects and things like that but besides that what would you guys like to see I don't really want to do like stash enhancement type things but if you guys have any ideas or positive reinforcement or not reinforcement positive um feedback or um just feedback in general besides the umming I know I am too much I know I need to work on it working on it um, but I would like to hear what you guys would like in the future I was thinking I might do like live streaming knit nights um, but I'm not sure if those would be on Instagram or if those would be on YouTube or what those would be um, if you guys would have any interest in that let me know um, this is sort of the first step in whatever this is and <laughs> um, hopefully um, you guys will come along in the journey with me. So if you have any questions or comments or feedback or whatever, leave it just down in the, in the, not in the doobly-doo, but in the comments below. Um, and yeah, I will hopefully see you guys in, in two weeks. That is my plan. Um, and on the internet in general, because now that I've kind of gotten the kinks worked out of, um, with my new job, I need to find balance again. So recording this is me trying to find balance, and I hope you guys enjoyed yourself and hopefully enjoyed me being all awkward and weird. So I will see you guys in two weeks. Happy knitting. Bye.